And welcome to the 11th meeting in 2017 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. Can I remind everyone to pre present to switch all electronic devices to silent as they may um, interfere with the broadcasting. Um, we have an apology this morning from Tom Arthur, MSP. And um, if we could move to agenda item one, which is um, a decision for the committee to consider its work programme in private at the next meeting. Do members agree to take this item in private? Thank you very much. And you now move to agenda item two, and I welcome Anas Sarwar to committee this morning. Um, uh, the agenda item two is to take evidence on a proposed cross-party group. The group we have to consider today is pro CPG on Govan Hill. And I would like to welcome the member to and invite Anas to make a, an opening statement. Thank you, Chair. Can I first of all apologise for being 30 seconds late? ScotRail was on time, so I, I missed my train, so I apologise. Um, th this has been a, um, a, this group, in terms of bringing this forward, as um, Mr Harvey will um, be aware of, uh, came from very much the local community of Govan Hill. Um, we were all invited as um, MSPs to a cross-party event with the community of Govan Hill um, and also organisations in Govan Hill. And what they expressed their frustration at was um, with all the constant elections that were happening with uh, different political parties being in different in power in different places was that they wanted politicians uh, who represent the city of Glasgow and wider afield to recognise the national impact of what was happening in Govan Hill, uh, what huge impact that had locally and for actually politicians to actually work together and perhaps take the heat out of what's happening in the vicinity of Govan Hill and bring it to Parliament in a way that is more more appropriate. And that's why I think it is in the interest of the Govan Hill community, but actually more widely of, of Scotland and this Parliament, uh, to have a cross-party group on Govan Hill to look at the issues specifically within uh, Govan Hill, which I think is um, slightly different from national strategies because of the specific challenges that we face in Govan Hill whether that be around uh, specific housing challenges, whether that be around specific immigration challenges, whether that be around social integration, whether it be around uh, poverty and health inequalities, uh, whether it be around other services around health and education uh, and how we meet the needs there, certain cleansing and environmental issues. Uh, and I'm sure some of you will have seen the programme just a couple of weeks ago as well around certain issues around human trafficking, which is also a huge issue uh, in Govan Hill as well. So this is uh, designed as a forum uh, to bring together all political parties uh, here in our Parliament and also individuals and organisations from Govan Hill to speak openly and honestly uh, in a less confrontational environment, which might be the case locally, but actually here in the Parliament to discuss how we can take forward those issues uh, and find uh, common ground and also find policies that can suit the area for Govan Hill and be an example for other places also. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can I invite any questions? Uh, Emma? You, um... I, I'm interested in the what you spoke about, less confrontational aspects. So if people were not in Govan Hill, but in here, you're saying that might be de less confrontational. Um, would it be a duplication, though, of people who are already actively involved in addressing some of the issues, whether it's environment, cleansing, to bring the same people to Parliament to talk about the same issues? Would that be a duplication? Are you meaning, sorry, in, in, in terms of the agencies or in terms of elected members, sorry? Agencies. Agencies. Um, uh, well, uh, as anyone that's ever been to a public meeting in Govan Hill will know, um, it very quickly descends into a battle between either agencies or a battle between organisations or indeed individuals. And this was a, a request directly from the community organisations in Govan Hill and also um, individual residents in Govan Hill that we should have a cross-party forum that brought together agencies but was overseen by parliamentarians who are the elected voices of people in Govan Hill and beyond uh, to try and overcome some of those challenges. Um, so in terms of the duplication, um, there, there has been communication already, for example, with the Education Department, with the um, Social Work Department and uh, Cleansing and DRS within Glasgow. Uh, and sometimes there's some confrontation between those individual agencies within one uh, local authority we're trying to create a forum. Uh, so within the last few days already, we've had a communication with um, the City Council and different forums. And there's a Govan Hill Action Group, which is currently now co-chaired by the local SNP councillor and also the local Labour councillor. Uh, and the intention is that th they would be invited to join the cross-party group, something that they have uh, not ruled out, but they want to meet uh, members of the cross-party group uh, to discuss the work they do and see if there is some common ground that can be found. So would you see that the cross-party group would meet here initially and to try and 
build relationships and then continue maybe to meet locally? I think it probably needs to be a combination of, of both and I think it would be for the members of the cross-party group to decide uh, alongside the co-chairs and the individual members, uh, both elected members and non-elected members of the CPG. Uh, I think we'd like to have meetings here in Parliament but also recognise that on some occasions we will require to do uh, either field visits or indeed meet agencies within Govan Hill or other parts of Glasgow um, and I'm, I think as a CPG we'd be open to that. Okay, uh, Mr Johnson. Thank you. Um, so section 6.3.11 asks us to consider two things when we're looking at the CPG. One is uh, public interest and the other is whether or not the CPG overlaps with a, an existing CPG. Could you maybe just sort of describe what you think the kind of the, the public interest in having mm -hmm. a, a CPG to, to focus on Govan Hill would be? Yeah. Uh, firstly, in terms of the overlap, I, I think there there's some CPGs that have similar work that the CPG and Govan Hill will consider, for example, around health inequalities, uh, around housing, uh, around human trafficking. Um, so it would be in important, I think, work with those CPGs and see what opportunities they have. Uh, I think what makes Govan Hill distinct is that we bring together all those things uh, that are happening, their individual issues and areas, uh, and overlap in terms of a, a real mirage of uh, challenges that we have in Govan Hill. In terms of public interest, I think that's, that's pretty clear. Um, Govan Hill has become a, a national story um, for all the wrong reasons. It, when actually there are some good things happening in Government Hill as well, but the, the, all the wrong reasons it's become a national story. Um, and uh, that might have an impact in terms of wider policy making in Scotland, but actually in the day-to-day -day impact that has on, on life for people in Government Hill um, is even more severe. Uh, and I think there's a, there's a genuine public interest for the people of Government Hill to know that their parliamentarians are working uh, together uh, with the agencies to try and address those issues. I think there's also public interest because I think what makes Govan Hill different from other places is I'm not sure that the national strategies, whether it be on housing, whether it be on immigration, whether it be on uh, cleansing environmental, whether it be on regeneration, will reflect the priorities that are in Govan Hill. So we might need some distinct policy making for Govan Hill that's different from what would be classed as being national strategies. Um, and I think that's why it's definitely in the public interest. And that public interest has, I say, been uh, expressed to us by the public themselves within Govan Hill. So, I mean, again, clearly one of the, the, the clear purposes of CPGs is to bring policymakers together with outside individuals and outside organisations. It's great to see that you've got the local police inspector as a, an external member and also uh, the local community council. I mean, are, are there other local groups that you're seeking to engage and maybe bring on board as Yes, as absolutely. So, uh, so after our first uh, meeting where we constituted uh, the group, there is a, a list of organisations that ha have been written to. Uh, to invite them to join. A number of them have expressed their interest. My intention would be to take all the communications that have come uh, from those organisations to the next meeting of the CPG so members can, uh, can approve uh, their membership and, and invite them to future meetings as well. Uh, finally, I mean, how do you, do you see this sort of as potentially as a model of, of, uh, of bringing people together to focus on particular issues in particular areas? Do you think this is something that, that that, that could be a benefit for, for other places? Look, I'm, I'm not going to say whether it's, it's a model for other areas or not. Um, I, I think genuinely it's, it's around, about Govan Hill, uh, to be honest. That's my intention for, for, for this group. Um, anyone who's ever visited Govan Hill, um, anyone who's ever spoken to a resident of Govan Hill, anyone who's ever read uh, some of the horrific things that happen in Govan Hill or watched any of the TV pieces on Govan Hill will understand how how serious an issue it is for local people and the genuine day-to-day -day impact it has on people's lives. And I think it's only right that that is reflected in priorities for, for this parliament and for parliamentarians in this parliament. And that's why I think it's really important for us to have this group. Great, thank you. Mr. Sheard. Thank you. Mr. Sauer, you put forward a very strong case uh, for the reasons that you believe that this should happen. Uh, and, and I'm certainly sympathetic towards that. Uh, but what priorities and what agenda will you set initially because you obviously have quite a lot of issues of to take on board uh, so you'll need to prioritize some of those into uh, what can be achieved uh, in a short term or a long term uh, and and how would you about go about uh, trying to achieve that because it obviously hasn't been achieved in the past no, very good question mr short the the four themes um, that have been identified by um, the cross party group is, is one around housing um, secondly around cleansing and environmental services uh, third around inequalities and social integration uh, and fourth around crime and antisocial behaviour. Um, but the, the, the most important issue, I think, from that is, is housing. Um, and the reason why is I think housing is what tracks on to the other issues that follow. Uh, we have a huge problem of overcrowding 
in Govan Hill. There are circumstances in which families are being trafficked from other parts of, of Europe, particularly from Eastern Europe, uh, with the promise of a job, with the promise of a home, uh, and are living in overcrowded accommodation with up to 8 to 12 people living in a flat, with only one person working, taking an income of, say, £200 a week, £50 going uh, to their gang master, £100 going uh, on their flat costs a week, and £50 to sustain a family of, of 10 to 12 people. Um, so, so much of the of the other issues that are happening around crime and antisocial behaviour, that are happening around um, human trafficking, that are happening around um, cleansing, that are happening around regeneration, all of it stems from real issues around housing. Uh, and one of the things that's been proposed before um, by by both the council and also by the Scottish government is how we look at, for example, compulsory purchase orders, how we how we use it, but how we use the powers that we have, uh, either at local authority level or at a Scottish government level, to actually do a transformational change around housing and overcrowding and I think that's a, that's a policy discussion that I think we're really keen to have. And I, and I think from developing all of that you will get short success stories initially uh, uh, on specifics uh, but in the long term uh, it's still a, a massive issue that has to be involved with not just parliamentarians, the other agencies and organisations uh, have to take on ownership absolutely. Uh, to make this work. Uh, absolutely, I mean without the support of local police, without the support of local agencies that are associated with the council, without the support of the Housing Association, uh, without the buy-in from, I believe, all political mm -hmm. parties and local community organisations, it's always going to be a challenge uh, to get the right results for Govan Hill. As I said, there are good things happening in Govan Hill, but we are so caught up in what on, on all the bad things and what appears to the public, at least, to be the sparring between different agencies or different mm -hmm. political parties. I think actually having a forum where we say, look, we're taking the party politics out of this. We're generally trying to work together and bring together agencies to address the issues in the government hall, I think it's a really important signal. Thank you. Thank you, convener. Mr Scott, did you...? Thank you, convener. I was going to ask about what the unique circumstances are, but you other colleagues have already asked you what those are. I'm very much taken by the idea that this is essentially from coming from the grassroots and a grassroots movement up. Um, so you've identified many of the unique problems. How do you see... What do you see as an outcome for this group? Do you see yourself as a catalyst to putting further pressure on, perhaps on government, for the national strategies that you mentioned that you believe are not working? I, I think it's a, a combination, Mr Scott. I think it would be wrong for me to suggest that a cross-party group in Govan Hill is going to be the silver bullet that's going to uh, solve all the problems in Govan Hill. If, if I said that, I'd be frankly not telling the truth. That's just not simply not the case. Uh, the reality is that uh, the situation in Govan Hill is very complicated. Um, it's years in the making, um, and it will take years to resolve. Um, and the, uh, the combination of how we resolve it is, uh, one, as I said, around the housing issue. So how do we tackle the gang masters, the slum landlords, and adequate housing legislation that gives the teeth to either the housing association or the local authority to take action against uh, rogue landlords and to actually transform uh, the heart of Govan Hill? I think that's a long-term uh, issue. Secondly, social integration is, is a huge challenge. I mean, the local school says it has over 40 languages spoken within uh, one school. That's obviously going to have an impact on children's education. It's going to have an impact on local services, whether that be local GP services or local or wider health services. Um, so how do we challenge social integration to make sure we're getting communities working together? Um, the interesting thing about Govan Hill is Govan Hill has always been an attractive place for people to move whenever we've had... Um, high levels of migration. So it was traditionally a place where the Irish community went to when they first came uh, to Glasgow, where the Jewish community first uh, went to when they came uh, to Glasgow, where the South Asian community first went to when they came to <coughs> Glasgow. Um, and it was always seen as a great place where people integrated and uh, Govan Hill still went on. Uh, there are specific challenges this time um, around uh, mass migration from Europe. Um, that less so to do with the individuals and more to do with the people who are exploiting those individuals. So how we actually work with the police to tackle exploitation, to identify the gang masters and to make sure we're actually putting effective uh, legislation on the ground, uh, I think is important. Um, as an aside to that, um, one of the things that I find most abhorrent about what happens uh, in Govan Hill is I think it's completely unacceptable for, for any time, but particularly in the 21st century, for any woman to have to think twice to walk down any street because of any possible verbal abuse or any threat of physical attack. That happens in Govan Hill. There are streets in Govan Hill which women will not walk down unless they're accompanied by somebody. And that's happening right now in, uh, within Glasgow and within Scotland. And I think that needs to be challenged uh, head on. So how we ad address those issues. 
and then going further to that, the levels of, of crime <coughs> and people being exploited, whether that be around uh, drug usage, whether that be around prostitution, whether it be around sham marriages, which was something that was exposed in, in the BBC programme, um, or indeed uh, other issues, uh, I think we need to address them all. Um, and I think the, 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 the symbolism of a group, I think, is firstly important, which demonstrates that the Parliament takes the issues in Govan Hill seriously. Um, secondly, it demonstrates, I hope, a, a maturity in terms of our politics that we can bring politicians from different political parties together to recognise that Govan Hill is a specific case uh, and should be uh, dodged from that party political infighting. Um, and thirdly, that we recognise that we need to bring agencies together for a strategic approach. Um, that, that's the intention uh, of the group. Again, I repeat, I don't think it's a silver bullet, uh, but I hope it's progress. I wish you every success. <coughs> uh, Mr Harvey. Thanks very much. Um, members will be aware that I'm uh, a member of this uh, proposed CPG. Um, I suppose I just wanted to uh, not let the whole session go by without uh, some greater kind of recognition that we're not just talking about an area with problems, we're also talking about an area with strengths and there's Absolutely. a lot of creativity, there's a lot Absolutely. of um, vibrancy in the in the local community and some uh, people doing fantastic work, whether as a response to the particular challenges uh, or just uh, because they're exploring the, the strengths mm -hmm. of, a, of a diverse community uh, and expressing that. Um, given that different levels of government have all had some attempt to proactively uh, respond to the particular circumstances in Govan Hill, including the Scottish Government. Um, each can engage with the community, uh, but if that happens in, in kind of separate boxes, if you like, uh, people end up feeling that stuff's being done to them. Uh, so would you agree that there's no forum at the moment, there's no space at the moment for people to engage across those different levels of government, local, Scottish, UK, uh, you know, as well as other agencies, and that that that's what this, this CPG yeah, I mean, aims to provide. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been at the um, community council meeting with yourself, uh, Mr. Harvey. We are um, that is a, a, a situation that's expressed where it goes from one agency to another, and mm -hmm. there's a, there's that that football kick around about where it lands. And I think giving an opportunity to bring uh, all those agencies together, uh, perhaps out out with the uh, the heat of what's happening in Govan Hill, I think is is an important opportunity. But can I please emphasise what what you said at the start? Um, which is, yes, there are bad stories in Govan Hill, but there are really good stories in Govan Hill. Um, and what I would love to see happen from the CPG is not only how we tailor policies um, from here and from other places that can help overcome the challenges in Govan Hill, but actually how we can use the example of Govan Hill and the things that they have got right mm -hmm. as a way of showing actually this is how you, you can have a gold standard of social integration, um, how you resolve challenging uh, local public services in a, in a situation where you have lots of different identities, lots of different cultures uh, brought together, how you can learn the lessons from what we've done in Govan Hill and replicate them in other parts. Uh, because uh, what's happening in Govan Hill could well happen in another, either another part of Scotland or indeed another part of the UK or indeed another part of Europe. Uh, and I think being able to tell that positive story in Govan Hill um, as well as trying to get the answers to the challenges in Govan Hill can be a replication for other parts of the UK and indeed other parts of Europe. Thanks. Okay. Um, and you know, we've touched briefly on the question, but could you give us an idea of how how the group would intend to work with other CPGs that you said have a um, similar remit, like uh, health inequalities and the yep. other areas, and and how you, you intend to go about engaging with other CPGs, given that we now have very many of them, and time for all members is is very constrained when it comes Absolutely. to. Absolutely, I mean, I, I think the, the I mean the obvious overlaps as I see are are in housing, health inequalities, and human trafficking. Um, and I think at the earliest opportunity, uh, my intention would be to, to, to write to all three of those um, CPGs asking if there is uh, co-work that can be done, whether that be uh, if they're bringing um, key stakeholders um, or policy makers together, whether that can be done at a, a joint meeting and a joint session, um, or indeed if there's lessons that they've already learned or examples of good practice that we can learn from them as well, particularly on the human trafficking side. Because um, I, I think the weakness that we would have probably in in the CPG on, on Govan Hill, it's, it's quite natural for us to focus on the day-to-day -day things like cleansing, housing, uh, local police, but but the wider issues around human trafficking, uh, I think, require a much more broader uh, approach. And I think the um, CPG on human trafficking can be a particular help for that one. Thank you. Uh, Ms Harper? Yes. One more question. Um, I think the clerks will keep me right, but there's about 95 cross-party groups right now, and there's... Uh, it's a real challenge to get to them. How often would you propose to meet? 
the challenge is we'll soon have more CPGs and MSPs, which will be of interest. Um, I mean, our intention is to do one meeting this side of um, summer recess, particularly looking at the issues around housing, um, and then a meeting the other side of, of recess, looking more at the uh, wider environmental and cleansing issues, which comes up uh, as a hot topic. Uh, but my intention would be for us to meet as, as, as often as is practically possible. Um, and I hope that would entail at least three or four meetings each calendar year within the Parliament and then hopefully some sessions within, within Govan Hill itself. Okay. Um, on, oh, sorry, was that another question? Are you sure? Thank, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, can I thank uh, Anna Sarah thank you so for your attendance time, this morning? Thank you. And um, we'll um, be considering the um, CPG in our next agenda item and you'll be informed of the um, decision as quickly as possible. Thank you so much thank for your time you. this morning. Thank, thank you. you. So we now um, can move to agenda item three um, and I would invite comments from the members regarding the proposed CPG. Very happy to support its uh, establishment, but then I would be because I'm a member. So. Uh, I mean, I think what they're trying to achieve is laudable, uh, but it has got challenges, there's no question about that. But I think trying to take the heat out of it that they talked about might be a, a very useful thing trying to achieve. Uh, and by bringing it and taking it on agenda items or specifics, uh, then they may well uh, try to get some success from it. But it obviously is a very complicated and quite volatile situation for the residents and uh, the members of parliament. Uh, but I think that it uh, should be tried, without question, because it gives an opportunity to, to try and take some heat out of that problem. Thank you. Yeah, my concern was that there's work going on and it, the duplication and the fact that you're pulling people out of Govan Hill to Edinburgh, where, but I think um, Anna Sarwar makes a, a valid point about taking the heat out of it and sometimes taking people out of that whole situation allows you to then maybe get a bit of a clear head and a focus. So it seems that uh, I agree about the idea of it being laudable. Something obviously has to be addressed. Mr. Scott. Um, everything that has been said, this is obviously a naturally welcoming community, but the problems are, are manifest and um, I welcome any effort on a cross-party group to address some of those problems it has to be a good thing. I think there's a recognition, a, a sensible recognition that it won't necessarily be a silver bullet, but if it's a catalyst to improvement, then it has to be a good thing. Okay, so do members uh, agree to accord recognition to the Cross Party Group and Governor Hill? Thank you very much. And on, we now move into private session. Thank you.